there's always that thing. It's like when my career starts, when my, I, I remember that like when I was really young, I had already been working like seven years. It's like when my career starts and then all of a sudden you go back and I was like, Oh, I wasn't paying attention that if this is my career. So once you decide to show up to your own career, it's like, it's a gold mine because you're like, fuck, this is fun. I'm here. Filmmaker Magazine presents Back to One with Peter Rinaldi. Billy Magnuson is an actor. He sat down with me in cyberspace to talk about the work. So many actors who started out in soap operas have this certain bravery, I think, in their performances that continues. I want you to talk about, like, I bet you that experience is still paying dividends for you in terms of what it did to, to in a foundational way for you. Can you talk a little bit about that? I mean, I mean, you kind of nail it on the head a little bit, like what you're talking about. You know, I did... I went to four years acting conservatory at North Carolina School of the Arts. Now, I think it's called University of North Carolina School of the Arts. Loved the program. Um, Just dove into this theater background. And then I got out of school and had the fortunate opportunity of getting cast on as the world turns. And um, it was being thrust into a whole new world, a whole new world of acting that, you know, in, in school, you don't deal with time you don't deal with money you don't deal with other people you know you deal with other people's bullshit but they don't care uh these things it's show up do your job and and go home you know and uh and of course getting used to the lightings and the the camera angles and all that stuff but i have to say the soap opera world i will never um never better way of saying forget i like it it is a part of who i am because it taught me so much about being ready and prepared and yes. just going for it. Cause you, you know, you would go home, you do, you shoot 40 pages of dialogue that night. They give you another 40 pages and you have to be ready by 5.00 AM <laughs> the next day. And that was the game. Not saying I, I failed over and over again, but uh, it was a great community. It was constantly playing new, new tactics and new actions every day. I, I adored it. Like it, it's a, and of course, I was like 22 in New York making, I think it was like two grand a week. I was like, oh my God, I'm rich, you know? It was everything. I guess I, I understand what you're saying with like, it follows you with it. I think it's just, it taught me professionalism right off the bat. Right, like, a foundation just of like, that. Yeah, just showing up and doing your job. That's that's the game. You have these lines to say, you have to hit those marks uh, and they have, you have four hours to do it. Right. You know, all this stuff. And it must have also been like a, a having an opportunity over and over again to attempt something and yeah. seeing its result and seeing, yeah. okay, wow, that really didn't work, but it goes out into the world. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. I just love just bookending a scene, you know, the whole thing. Like y- you have to say, well, it was with your mother. <laughs> And then look off into the distance and like we had the whole thing. You just think to yourself in your head, did I just shit myself? <laughs> just to hold a moment. <laughs> just always confused. Because otherwise you you would also probably bust out laughing too, right? Oh man, I had so much fun. I had a buddy, Tom Degnan, um, that was on the show. And like before, like, you know, they do three, two, one, roll, you know, action and stuff we would slap each other in the balls and stuff right before it takes. So like sometimes it would make the cut, <laughs> I, you know, he would start up and scene and be like, oh, no. I just came back from the coffee shop talking with Allison, you know, and it, but it was like live and active. You know? Again, getting that opportunity, I, I will never regret. Like it was, it was worth everything. I want to talk about the uh, Vanya and Sonia and Masha and Spike. Boom, bang, bang, boom. <laughs> I want to yeah. talk about this in, in in this way. If I was cast as Spike in my yeah. with my six pack back in the day. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, on opening night, here's what I would be doing. I'd be thinking, all right, here's three veteran actors. This entire play is going to be ruined tonight by me on opening night <laughs> because they cast me. 
<laughs> this young guy, you know, first big play. Uh, and, 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 you know, cause it's not like, Hey, we're all young people in this, this is opening night jitters, like three <laughs> veterans <laughs> and yeah. you in this performance that you have to get to a level of physicality and all this stuff. I mean, so just take me back to that opening night. I mean, forget about it. I mean, it's amazing that you got this opportunity unless there was something yeah. crazy that brought that, but opening night how did you deal with that with on your first well, broadway night well that's the thing um so again I, the fortunate opportunity to work like you said they're veterans sigourney weaver christine nielsen and uh david Hyde pierce they're veterans uh and they accepted me with open arms and i was honestly just a kid on a playground with these these people and that's why they are who they are they are so opening and welcoming there's no ego there is just the play and the work so I felt like an artist working with them mm. because they gave me the space and freedom. And now like I take that into my, my work now, especially moving forward, like the way David just kindly and graciously opened his heart and his hand to me, just being like, no, let's go. Let's, mm. let's play. Um, that gives you all the confidence in the world, you know, and you get their, their seal of approval working with Nicola, uh, the late um, Nicky Martin again, directing from a wheelchair he was just he just let us play and do the whole thing funny story is the audition i think is what again got me that role um i think i i was living in new york i hadn't worked in a year um i would have to choose between uh, a subway ticket or a sandwich for the day wow. and that's where i was in my career wow. Wow. <laughs> and so i had zero f's to give basically yes. at that point I, I memorized the lines and I remember going into the audition at Lincoln Center um, and just starting to do the, the scene. At, and there was a piano in the back corner of the, 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 the area or whatever, the audition space. And I just went over and just started banging on the whole thing and doing the scene. It had nothing to do with it. It was just, I think I was so free to just be present in whatever came to me in that moment. And like, I think that was a little bit of spike was just like freedom of being there and in the moment. Um, I, it, wow. There's so many places I could go with this. I can continue with the Broadway night thing. I had already been doing the show a year already. Oh, that's right. Uh, you know, yeah. we, we started at uh, in Connecticut, Princeton. right? Yeah. We started there. We did a run in Princeton. Then we went to Lincoln center in uh, the the theater underground and finally we got moved to Broadway. So it's been a year already. Right. So it was, it, we were, we got to the point doing that play where we can have a conversation on stage doing the play full out and be talking about the person in third row eating chips, you know, <laughs> <laughs> and we're doing the full play. So wow. like there was a play between all of us wow. as the plays going on. Yeah. yeah. That, wow. that, that was exciting. Um, I guess talking a little bit about acting or what I think acting is, I think it is preparation, like do as much preparation as you can. Uh, and like, fuck dude, your job as an actor, memorize your fucking line. That's the, that's like number one, just memorize your fucking line. And like, I hate people that don't do it. So you're saying that I'm sensing a, a, a frustration in your voice there. Is this with other people that literally do not memorize their lines? that you encounter? I, I have, I think we all have. I'm, I'm not saying I'm perfect by any means and stuff like that. And I know um, I fail most of the time when I don't have it down pat my lines and stuff like that. But I think what I've noticed with acting is the free, you have to have such organized um, plans and rehearse things to then literally let go of all of it because you don't want to think. You have to just be present in the moment with whatever the story is of uh, yeah i think preparation you have to do so much preparation to just be like fuck it you know right, you, right. and you don't have to think about it and that's like the freedom it's finding that freedom in the structure right you know it's like that like you think of a sport or something like that basketball there's so many rules like there's the bounds there's inbounds out bounds you can dunk you, can't, you have to dribble you have to, you have all these rules but think of all the magic that happens on a basketball court that you're like i could never even have thought of that right, to happen right Right, but there are rules. Right, know? right. It's like magic. But you practice so much accidents happening yeah. within the structure. That's what you're talking yeah. about here. 
Yeah, you just play the rules of the game, and and you always know when you make uh, you you foul out, you foul out or something. You you know because you got it down so much. We're in a collaborative art form completely from from uh, like the director, the writers, the producers, the lighting, the crew, everything. We're, we are we don't know no one knows what they're fucking doing but we're all there to be like oh this is the best idea let's move forward and i always hope to work with people like that that are so open to collaboration because like there's no right way of doing anything you've heard that joke right uh how many actors does it take to screw in a light bulb right 100 actors to screw in a light bulb one to screw it in and 99 to say i could have done that better <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> <laughs> but that's it's true it's like there's yes. there's no right i think there's just freedom and it's a visceral thing that you just tap into it's like universal undercurrent your second big role on the stage in the new york stage was uh sex with strangers the great anna gun directed by david schwimmer and yeah, I remember somebody, somebody that was in, um, I knew somebody that was in band, the brothers. And that's when I really learned about the real serious, hardcore David Schwimmer actor man, you know, like yeah. people really finding out that he was real serious in this craft. What is it like, because he was an actor and then directing you, does that matter? And the, and the, have you ever come across that again, where another actor was directing you? Does that, does that make a difference? Does somebody like that have a different way about doing that I job absolutely adore david absolutely adore him completely um and it, it it was great and hard at times there was a point like a director's job is to watch and observe and in the beginning david started stepping up into the space and mm. as an artist you have to and i there's no one at fault here but you have to say hey there's boundaries mm. and you're, you're, you're crossing them, you know? And because of that, I think our relationship grew even greater and respecting each other mm. and saying, Oh shit. Okay. I think again, him as a director, he was, uh, you know, not nervous, but like, you know, it, his career is on the line too. If he's curious about it and you do have to learn to let go and fail and whatever. Um, that experience was absolutely completely rewarding for me. But yeah, we, it was great talking and discovering and figuring this play out with him. And it, it's for someone I admire so much to actually find my own artistic voice through that process was very powerful for me. Yeah. I you bet. know, because that that's that's claiming it. And that's that's what I think every young actor should do is claim it. When you worked with Mark Rylance, like other people that have worked with him, I've I've, I've he's almost like a sage. What did you learn from that dude? I, I'm sorry, I speak only in analogies, it seems, but um, he it's like he builds a car, the car's on, uh, he builds a beautiful car, the car is on, but it's in park when he's not shooting, but the car is always on. Mm. And then when shooting starts, he puts it in drive. Whoa. And I think it's it's a focus, and it's a, it's a, a centering and a... Um, he finds his his spot. I think I I can't I don't know his actual process, but this was an observation yeah. I observed. Wait, wait, let me let me let me ask you something about that observation. Sticking with your metaphor, were there people getting in and out of the car when it was in park? Do you know what I mean? Like uh, were people in, <laughs> were people interacting <laughs> with him in a way like? Yeah, no, yeah, yes, uh, yeah. We would talk to him. We share stories. You know, I, I I remember being on set and it's like Tom Hanks, Mark Rylands, me. And I'm like, how the fuck am I sitting here? You know, um, Tom is just fun and fantastic. But Rylands would talk. We would all talk and be there. But he was in, he was in his car, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. and the engine was on mm. and he was just living in that world. And then like we would take like a, a van home together or something. Cars, cars away. Mm. It was like uh, when he's on set. The car is on. It's go. It's ready, and then he puts it. He puts it to bed, and then he gets know, gets in it in the morning, and he turns it on in the morning before he gets there. Yeah, yeah. interesting, interesting. Yeah, I thought it was, but I, I I don't know how he prepared anything, and I also think with each project, I, I imagine I I can only speak for myself, the, the way you prepare and 
prep for something is completely different every time, you know? Um, uh, yeah. And I mean, speaking of focus, I mean, how important is focus for you? Like you, you give an example there. Tom Hanks is like joking around. I've heard that from other people like, and it, and that must be great. Like it's almost like lightens up the set, but mm -hmm. does, does do, do other people like that or too much of that make, make, make an unfocused kind of environment? Is that, does that work against what you need, you know, even for, for... no, no, because when the priority does not become about the project for someone, that's where it, it lacks and that's where it falls apart. If the priority and the focus isn't on the project, then it's shit. It's, if it's about an individual or something else, I think it's, it's not fun because we're not there collectively focusing on one thing. Um, so that's the only time if someone's like diverting and making it about themselves or their focus is somewhere else, yeah, it, it, the the project itself kind of starts to fall apart because you know focus isn't there. But at the same time, with that, when it is focused there, you have the freedom to have fun and play and make fun of yourself, and like the freedom, you know, that's the, one of the best parts of this working on this Made for Love show um, with Kristen Milioti and and Ray Romano, like. We were all so focused on it, and God damn it, did we have fun though the whole time? Because we we all loved this. We loved showing up. We loved creating it there. Uh, don't get me wrong; we would go off on tangents and play and whatever. But yeah, the, the, we all loved this project so much. Do you love Kristen Milioti as much as I do? Uh probably more. Probably more. All right, we'll work that out later. But so. <laughs> She was on Broadway when you were on with once. Did you get to know yeah. her then? I met Kristen 10 years ago. We played husband and wife in a movie called The Brass Teapot. And I'm pretty sure she got what? edited out for the movie. Whoa. <laughs> but uh, I love, I, I was like, God damn this girl. I love her. Because she's funny, intelligent, talented, just everything, everything you want in a performer. Um, I was at the Golden Theater and I don't know the name of her theater. But we were right next to each other oh and we shared God. a back alley. And I would always, always at intermission go over to her because her dressing room was right by the stage door. Wow. So I'd be like in this like spandex prince outfit walking over there doing a comedy. She's doing once where she's tear jerking out. Yeah. And then we, I would go into her, uh, her dressing room and just make <laughs> fart noises. And just, it was just so, so fun. I would always try like, I don't know if you remember the play or you saw it. No, I didn't. There's like, there was, it's a, it's all set in a bar and there's like on both sides of the stage, there's these swinging doors that are glass. Uh -huh. and I would go <laughs> while they were doing a show and like peek in and be a patron <laughs> outside walking past the bar in a Prince outfit. I, I just pushed, 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 uh, pushed it as far as I can go. <laughs> you know. Again, it's fun. We're just, there's no yeah. ill intent or anything. Yeah. But yeah, we, I, know, I just remember there were days she was like, not today, Bill. Not today. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'd flip over a chair and then walk out. <laughs> so you guys go way back. This is amazing. I, there, I, I, there's I, something about Kristen that we both tap into this childlike, man, she's my buddy. That's like the best way I can put it. Yeah. She's just a homie and we can sit there and laugh. I, I, I've had to yell at her on stage uh, like because she's making me laugh too much. And I'm like, you can't fucking, dude, it's my coverage. Shut the fuck up. Stop doing, you know? Literally stopping a day of work and be like, God damn it, Kristen, you're, t you're too funny. Can you describe the kind of of director that works best for you oh carrie carrie fukunaga man he's my homie tell me about him and why that worked best for you it all comes back to getting the opportunity to work with people that are collaborative and open for playing and interpretation and we can move around and explore you want people that are open not just or i've always found it more exciting where 
there's a conversation about it. People are all invested. They are open to ideas. And like at the end of the day, the best idea should always win. Yes. Um, Carrie, Carrie's a fucking workhorse. He is unstoppable. And you know what? I, I weirdly, when I first met him, I was like, I see what you're doing. I get it. He's not going to stop until it's right. And I was like, fuck, bro, I'm on, I'm on that train. I'm not, I'm not stopping until it's right. So let's go. Like, yeah. what else do I have to do? <laughs> yeah. I'm here. I, I got, I'm here to do this job. So let's do it the way you, you want. So, so that, that kind of strong adherence to his vision made you want to get on that train. Uh, yeah. Also, again, I think it comes back to caring for people that you work with and you get to know them and like, man, he became a buddy. Uh, and I, I'm very fortunate to call a lot of people I've worked with friends, not just acquaintances. Um, and you invest in the person because again, we don't, we all don't know what we're doing, but let's have a good time while Paul getting at it. You know? Yes. There's always that thing. It's like when my career starts, when my, I, I remember that like, when I was really young. I had already been working like seven years, like when my career starts. And then all of a sudden you go back and I was like, oh, I wasn't paying attention. That This is my career. So once you decide to show up to your own career, it's like, it's a gold mine because you're like, fuck, this is fun. I'm here. A young man ran up to you once and said, do you have any advice for me? I'm a young actor. And you told him, fail. And I thought that, that fail that, fucking hard, fail hard. <laughs> yes. And, and that's such a, a really important thing for young people, especially it's the time to try and then fall on your face. Right. I mean, cause that, yes. that's just all learning stuff, but you right now, do you still feel like you need to have opportunities to fail right now to, for, for your own craft to grow? Like, is oh, there, yeah, I'm still failing right now. I, I directed my first piece and like I see already all the, the, the cracks and all that stuff. And I'm like, oh, this is so exciting. I can build on this because I know I, I could see what doesn't work and what works. And you're like, oh, OK, cool. You're you're always bettering yourself. I, you know, one of my favorite kind of like quotes is like, you know, always jump for the next limb. Go go big. And if it fucking breaks. Maybe you can fucking fly. Who knows? But you got to jump to find out, you know? Yes. Um, I was fortunate enough to go and like, like talk to some um, students at my old alma mater. And that same question was like, what, what's the advice? And fail was there. But then also that you don't need permission at any point to be your own artist. You're your own artist right now. It's, it, you're here. Once you decide to be that artist, you're, you're on it. And you, you know, you've said something like, yes, you've been lucky, but you have to be ready, like, like, and be ready to step into that. You know, that's, that's, I think another part of this whole advice thing, lucky things can happen to you, but if you're not prepared and ready to do the work, once that lucky thing happens, like, I feel like I know so many people that have had that happen where they weren't ready. They've had a break and they didn't step into it. And, you know, and they're off somewhere. I think it comes back to that, that failed, failed, failed attempt. Man, if you're going to fucking swing for the fences, swing for the fucking fences. Go for it. Look, if you, you, you might strike out, fuck it. If you hit it, you might get a triple. Who knows, man? It's like, yeah, but still, bang, just go. I think a lot of people are scared to jump um, because they don't know. They do think falling and failing is the worst part. And I think never jumping is the fucking worst part. But you know what? You had an upbringing. Tell me if I'm wrong. Where your parents really let you do crazy things. And, and you know, where other parents wouldn't have. I mean, do you think that that really plays a part in this? Like, are you were you brave as a young person because you grew up like that? You know, it brings me, this, it brings me back to a story my mom would tell me. I was like, four or three or something like that playing on a playground and I was jumping off something high and a, a woman came up to my mom was like, you, you, you're going to watch your, your son's jumping. Like, what, what, you know, you're going to hurt himself. And my mom's like, well, 
he'll figure it out. He'll, he'll know. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it was too high. <laughs> you know? Yes. Um, nothing, but they, they've always, I was big into sports growing up and they always supported every endeavor I went for. You know, they really were, they made it uh, achievable as much as they could. Um, yeah. And I, I'm forever uh, in debt and grateful for them because they, they really helped me become who I am. Are you um, missing the stage? Do you? Yes. And without hesitation. Yeah. So can you, is, is, it seems like most people I talk to that miss the stage, they make a joke about how, yeah, it doesn't pay the bills. Like, it, like if it paid the bills, I'd be, I'd be going for stage work all the time. Is it about that? No, it pays the heart bills, babe. It's like, <laughs> it's, yeah. it's, it's, I don't know. I love the routine. It was, it's the only consistency you have as an actor in this world a little bit. Mm -hmm. Yes, you are working when everyone's on recreation time, but there is something nice to a routine and a uh, pattern um fuck man if it's about the money get the fuck out is there a certain role that you would really like to play that's within your grasp it, i don't have it yet because i don't think we have truly dove into and found the profound depth of modern day artists and we have to start celebrating modern day playwrights and shit like that and places are too scared well, let's fucking get over it. Because who is the modern day playwright? Who is this person? Let's cultivate this age's voice. And that's what I want to be a part of. I don't want to play uh, a revival. I want, to, I want to do what is now and what's relevant. I am so with you on this. I'm so glad you said this. Because it doesn't, because we, we're, we're so used to just like revering these classics over and over and over again. Meanwhile, the people that are, are expressing them, like, how, how are we going to have new classics for the next, you know, generation, a hundred years from now? I mean, like, you know, the, like the people are around now, uh, uh, dealing with their own creativity in a way they should be placed up in the same way. I, I agree with you. That's what I'm saying. Who, who, it, who are our generation's voices? Let's, let's cultivate that. Let's champion that because we're alive with them. What an honor. Yes. You know, how many times, has somebody said to you, wow, you're really on a roll. Does this get old? Like you're, you seem like just a working actor who loves the work and, and you take it as it comes. Are you being pressured into having this kind of bird's eye view of your career or are your people saying like, you have to, you know, you're on a roll now. You have to take advantage of, <laughs> I don't know what, I mean, you know what I mean? Like, and does this go against kind of what you want to be doing with your own, you know, trajectory? Um, that's a really very intriguing question for me and interesting. And I, I, I you know, I, uh, I thank you for viewing it that way, but no, I don't, I don't feel that way. <laughs> you know, it's, it's, it's the truth is you're like, when's my next, what is my next job? I'm never going to work again. You know, I was, I got fortunate to work with some great people <laughs> that are, will always work again. And they feel the same way. It's just like, where is the next meal coming from? What is the next uh, endeavor? Do you have to like explain this to your quote team? Do you know what I mean? Like, it's like, this is what I really want to know. Is there, is there like this, I, I'm sensing, maybe I'm crazy that like true actors, like I think you are, like actors, actors who are in the business have these people on their team that are like, hey, here's some things here. You have to go in this direction because you're on a roll or you have to take the tide when it's coming, you know, and you're like, um, no, I want to see, you know, look at it differently. Yeah, I, I, I have much pride with, uh, my team and how we conduct that. And like, I've heard that story or that, that narrative expressed before. And I feel very fortunate working with, you know, Dara Gordon, Hanley Baxter, Danny Streisand, Billy, you know, and I've had other agents too, Esther Chang and Charles Bodner. And like through my career path, have been able to really um, orchestrate something fun. 
and had, there was no, again, I'm so fucking lucky to have the opportunities that I've had. Um, but there are moments where you have to say, is this right for me? Is this what I need to do right now? Instead of just getting a paycheck. I wish I was gazillionaire. I wish I was rich and shit like that. Um, but yeah, it's, I don't know what I, I remember young, I took a job for money and it was like the worst decision I ever did because mm. I hated it and I hated showing up. Um, and since then I tried to really construct a career that was, I want to try that. I want to taste that. I want to mm. work on that. Well, my team has been really beautiful in having an open conversation because there's, I'm Billy Magnuson, but then there is a quote unquote product of Billy Magnuson right. or a, a brand, like whatever you want to say. Yeah. And it's a team of people. There's a lot of people talking about this. Um, so I do have a, a big say in it, but also we're in a collaborative art form. And I think the best way is to listen a lot more than just demand or yes. interject. Yes. You know? Yes. I so I, I, I find myself very fortunate and I try to, I, I've always tried to um, surround myself with people that I care for and love and respect. Cause I think that's at the end of the day, like, we're just playing make believe, but do do we like the people we're working with? Do we love the people we're working with? Do we know who they even are? Like, how many people actually don't know uh, their agents or the people that work with them? You know, I think the investment in people is is the key. Billy Magnuson, thank you so much. Thanks, Bud. Thanks, Peter. I appreciate it. Back to One is a production of Filmmaker Magazine, which is a publication of The Gotham, formerly IFP. Listen to back episodes of this podcast at filmmakermagazine.com or wherever you get your podcasts.